Welcome to the final part of my sims. This is the avatar I used to play this game. And as you can see, my workshop and my house have undergone some aesthetic changes. And if you're wondering where I got this ninja costume, I completed all of the Uber Sims set that you can invite to live in your town. So, let's go see where the Uber Sims are and end this video properly. Here are some of the houses of the Uber Sims. You may remember Hopper here, and here are all of the objects I gave him. And if you remember, Hopper is the first. Uber Sim, I invited to live here. He can give me this neat looking couch and maybe some other objects like maybe this frog shaped bed. Other than that, we also the Uber Sim of fun, and that is the Amazing Daryl. You may remember him in the video where I talked about the process of getting an Uber mm. Sim. <gasps> Basically, Morocco! the town has to have. 100% a specific interest. So, for Daryl here, if a town has 100% sims with homes that radiate the fun interest, you have the option of inviting him to live in your town. This house is of Star. It is her secret hideout. And Star initially was described as a kind of farm girl, but it turns out that Star is a Jonin of the Crescent Moon Village. Home of 10,000 Jutsus. That's a lot of Jutsus. Clearly, this game was made during the Naruto ninja craze, or maybe Naruto Shippuden. And, well, it's interesting to see huh. certain no, characters. Huh. And,. Let's see, this town's a lot safer with me in it, don't you think? Well, <laughs> it did give me a neat outfit. And mm. the mm. unique mm. thing about mm. this mm. reward is that I, of course, got mm. this neat looking face mask. Very useful in recent times. But that's three Uber Sims down, and there are three more. And you have this one Mail, Mel the Mummy's Crypt, and 
Mel, the mommy believes that you can add interest to any room with just a few tasteful knickknacks. For example, decorative jars filled with your vital organs. This is, of course, creepy sounding, but he is a mummy, so creepiness is somewhat expected. And this is apparently his coffin. I gave him a couple extras to try to get him to be my best friend. And when you talk to him, you find out that Mel is a bit more eloquent in the My Sims universe than in ours. So I hardly remember what I look like. It's kind of sad, really. And unfortunately, as a mummy, his body's probably a lot more shriveled looking under those bandages. And. Of course, when you become best friends with a uber sim, you get their clothes as a reward. And the funny thing about Mel is that his clothes also has a kind of female setting, where you wear a bracelet with pink bandages. I am wearing Star's outfit, but I suppose to differentiate it with a female setting, you also get this neat looking ninja mask, of course. Not sure if it counts as cross dressing technically, but here's another Uber Sim. This one is, well, we have to wait a couple of minutes or seconds for him to appear. Mm. This is <laughs> Chancellor Kara, the uber sim of the tasty interest. Complex yet elegant in taste, the texture of this house is fantastic and yes, the right temperature. Wonderful job. Of course, we do have this ice cream stand. And I guess that does contrast with this pizza oven. I was going to give him one, but apparently since he has one already at hand, it seemed rather, I guess, oxymoronic. He also had the coffee maker that you get for completing the tasks of Sedella, a cafe owner, and Samurai Bob here is the uber sim of the studious interest. And for Samurai Bob, Let's hope I get that name right, because there are a lot of names here. I did. Neat. Samurai Bob. The key to Samurai success is patient study. That and a special tonic which Bob applies liberally each day. And... I suppose it could be considered stereotyping to think that someone with Japanese aesthetics would want a karaoke machine and a video game machine. But it does help 
Well, they just um, not to be rude, but when you talk to him, he says things like, I am glad I moved here. This seems like an excellent place to continue my studies. And with that, I did neglect to give him a TV. But he does have this neat looking telescope to look at apparently outer space. I will leave the Uber Sims here and take a look at the fully occupied town of Vermonville. And this sim here is Makoto, and according to here, being a good student is easy for Makoto because he is a highly advanced, artificially intelligent humanoid robot. So, apparently in the My Sims universe, being a robot is not much of a difference compared to being a human. He gets this sweet looking chair, I will admit, and talking to her, you find out that Thank you for the home. I am sure it will satisfy my needs as a real person. Clearly, she does not know the finer points of being a human, as implied with the fact that she talks a lot of uppercase letters. I put it here because once we exit the desert area, we find out that, well, you have this robot lab, and it turns out her creator is Dr. F. And you will remember that I decided to base my Sims look on him, particularly the hair, and, well, we find out that certain narratives are made with how I place certain Sims, like I put Makoto, Alexa, and Dr. F together, because in here, and in other games of the My Sims franchise, you find out that Dr. F created Makoto, and Alexa is an assistant of Dr. F, mostly to keep him from doing things that'll destroy the world or something like that. And Star isn't the only ninja, spy, clandestine person living in Vermonville. Welcome to the SIM headquarters. The sim in charge of this building is Natalia. Who is Natalia? Frosmanov, if that is her real name. We can neither confirm nor deny that Natalia is a master of surveillance and gatherer of intelligence. Rumor says she is affiliated with the organization SIM, but those are only rumors. Where did she come from? How old is she? Don't worry if you don't know anything about Natalia. She knows everything about you. So it might have turned out that 
there was another sim with tasks that could result in me getting a new object, like this supercomputer. And, well, it does look like something a secret agent would have. And when you talk to her, Ripsy Kubarau, you Borkoli? Find out that more studious object will help us gather more information, don't you think? Well, other than that, I have completely filled out every part of all of the empty lots in Verminville. We have a new ice cream parlor. We have interesting houses here. And we have a spooky two-story house in this area. And... Well, this place is completely filled out. And once we get out of this forest, we can take a look at the first area of Vermonville that I had to occupy with getting people to live in it, and it too has been made fully occupied, mostly by sims that most likely had a cameo in The Sims 4 as figurines. Like, if we go this way, we see this fancy looking nightclub of DJ Candies, a new two story building for Chef Tino, a library for Elmira Clamp, which is ironic when you see that it's next to this nightclub. And I am going to end it here on a look at my workshop. It's a lot more technological. There is a solar panel, mostly because at this point, the Sims 4 expansion pack for Eco Living was made available, and I kind of wanted to acknowledge that in this video and in building things. And now we have my house. It has not undergone many significant changes, but it does have a lot more technology to it, such as this robot fighting machine, and as a ninja, I decided to maybe make numerous high references, or at least something for before you freak out, yes, that is an actual hairstyling seat. And since I am done here, I guess I could try taking a nap. So. Since I am done here, thank you for watching my playthrough of my sims, and please watch, like, and subscribe because the next video that I will be doing a series on will be a bit more active.
in comparison to this game. <laughs> 